Hey there, Jeff Manchester, Manchester Music. Welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about the latest toy from Spitfire Audio, Kepler Orchestra. You get a lot with this guy. High strings, cello, brass, bass, woodwinds, and warped. Warped is kind of like a patty playground, I think, developed from the instruments that were used to come up with this library. So this is kind of like a rhythmic Evo system, and it works a bit like, a, like Newton's Cradle, where you have things moving in and out, expanding, contracting, um, and you can kind of play with time a bit like a Steve Reich track or something like that once you get the hang of this library, which um, admittedly has a different kind of learning curve and system than other Spitfire libraries that requires you to kind of bring your brain a little bit more, frankly. Um, I'm going to get into the basic functions of the library. We're going to hear some of it. We're going to go through some patches. And then I'm going to talk about how I feel about it and the competitive landscape, because there might be some other um, libraries and things out there that could satisfy you if you're kind of on the fence about, you know, what this whole thing is. Spitfire libraries are, um, you know, they're uh, a little expensive, a little more expensive than some other stuff out there. So I want to introduce you to some couple other things that you might not know about in case you don't know about them and should. So. Let's first start off with this grid system. So we get our um, uh, half, quarter, eighth, and sixteenth notes across for each of the time divisions. Some time divisions have uh, fewer note values. Um, but let's just start off with these half notes here in the duplet section from the high strings grid. So when I put my hands down on the keys, Let's move over to um, half notes in the triplet section. And we do that just by hitting Command. I guess it'd be Control on a PC, Command, Apple key on a Mac, and just click to assign all these pegs. And you'll see the keyboard changes here um, color-wise to tell you, hey, you're hanging out in this time division or that, um, so on and so forth. Let's do the same thing. Let's go over to quintuplet. finally the kind of quickest here in this time division. So for people wanting to do ostinatos and things like that and work really quickly with you know fast rhythmic elements, I think where it's at are these 16th notes here. here just to hear how these sound. Not playing my best, just kind of mucking around. Um, one of the things that you can do, of course, is choose different pegs to activate different time divisions to start to get, you know, really tricky and, and play around. You'll see that my uh, keyboard changes color here. So we have different, you know, uh, time divisions um, portrayed here on the keyboard so you know where to put your hands. In the effects controls, you've got reverb and delay. The nice thing about this library for some people, nice thing is that you can turn all these time-based effects down to blend the library with other libraries that you have. People seem to be really picky about, you know, reverb matching and all that, which I understand. So it's dry. It's not anechoic chamber dry, um, but it's pretty dry. We can bring them back up. And we can also change the mic positions, expression dynamics, quantize. Um, let's jump over to a couple different grids that I think are a little bit more uh, forward thinking and different from what else is out there. And one of them is this momentum grid. So I want to bring this over here. Yes, I want to replace it. And we get fewer kind of options here, but these articulations are really cool. Uh, so let's start with um, these half notes here. And let's, you know, hear the momentum grid. Now for expediency's sake, I'm just going to stick with the uh, half notes in the duplet time division for the different uh, grid so we can really hear the difference. So it's almost like a crescendo. It reminds me a lot of Olafur Arnold's uh, Chamber Waves uh, library, which is one of my favorites. Um, pulsing Momentum Grid is the same kind of vibe, but the articulation is a little bit different.
So with these articulations, the notes are staggered, and we get them almost in waves, like you know, one after another after another. Uh, let's move a couple pegs around just to get some different results here, uh, just for fun. Um, there's no rhyme or reason here. We're not doing anything technical. I'm just kind of uh, you know blindfolded, throwing the dart, uh, and just trying a few different notes. The other thing is that you've also got these snapshots here, which I don't think they called out in the video, but they have these kind of uh, built-in presets, if you will, uh, for each, I'm not sure if each of these grids, but for a lot of these grids. So we can go to the Spitfire designed snapshots. So fast ripples, uh, sounds like this. pretty dizzying. If we go to accelerating momentum grid, this is probably one of the most interesting, um, we're just going to call them articulations, but um, listen to how it differs from momentum, pulsing, and basically the grid, grid. It's very affected and very much its own thing and could be used, I think, to transition passages in your arrangement between sections in your queue. Um, have a listen. So it almost, uh, it's kind of like taking the best of the pulsing, but also having it repeat until it kind of grinds to a halt and gets, um, you know, gets ahead of itself and then just collapses and fades back down, um, which is kind of cool. The shards grid is a little bit like, they say, shards of light. I'm not really sure how best to describe this. Instead, I'll just uh, play it for you so you can hear. Of course, this would be a really good opportunity to play with some of the other uh, time divisions here. Just build a couple. So let's hop over to a number of other articulations. When we deal with lower instruments, you get these Doppler grids, which are really cool. Some people have pointed out, uh, very helpful, um, that this is what I was asking for, this Doppler effect from base library, sample libraries. I found it in one library from um, Heaviosity. Uh, I forget the name of it. It's a brass library. And they've got it here. It's not as dramatic as Heaviosity stuff, because Heaviosity is Heaviosity, capital H, Heavy. Uh, but we still get it in here, and this is this effect where, you know, if something is moving away from you, it, it goes down in pitch based on the, the Doppler effect. And they've been able to replicate this with articulations um, and these fun little time divisions here in the library as well. So have a listen. We have our non-pulsing Dopplers as well, which you can load in. So now we get like, you know, nice sustained notes, but still that Doppler effect. And nothing when I hit this low C, apparently. <laughs> Not entirely sure why. But we get a lot of fun here with these Dopplers when we go into the bases grid, where I think these sound their best.
let's move back over to um, high brass. Actually, no. I want to jump over to woodwinds. We haven't explored these yet. I'm a big fan of woodwinds, as people know on the channel. I think they're kind of my new strings. I don't use strings that much anymore because I think these are just so much more... They've got so much more character, and I'm really happy to see a bunch of different grid positions here for these guys, too. And again, the fun is just going in and seeing uh, what kind of stuff you can cook up here. Let's do something crazy like this. Okay, let's jump over to the warped section. And from here we have these, again, they're like pads, but they're they're cool. Press yes, some of them have had some trouble loading. By the way, if you have, you know, a uh, controller, just move, move this wheel, the mod wheel. That's super resonant. Let's go to something else. This guy's a good example. So you almost get like a nice ring modulator um, when we bring up this this wheel. Let's keep going down here. I wonder if these are constellations in keeping with the Kepler vibe. So one of the things that I think people should know if you're still watching is that a lot of people have been reporting having problems with their CPU. So this guy is a very CPU hungry um, sample library, I think because of how much need to be needs to be stored in the buffer and just kind of save there. Um, if anyone's having issues with clicks or clipping or anything, go into your buffer settings here, audio, uh, and I'll just show you here. So if we go down to 64, which is something you want for tracking for, you know, very low latency or whatever. So when you hit your note or whatever, play your guitar, the sound that comes back to you in your headphones is what you're hearing kind of within a millisecond or within a time window that's not obvious. So it's, it's coming back with almost no latency. But when I bring it down to 64 and apply the changes, some people um, might hear clicks or clipping, not clipping, but clicks and pops and things like that. That's, you know, your CPU trying to keep up with, with what you're doing. Let's actually go to one of the grids where this is a better, better example here. Let's see if we get any clicks. Yeah, so you hear that? And also look up here at the CPU. I mean, it's getting kind of crazy right there, right? So go to your audio preferences and lower or raise the buffer size here to something a bit more manageable. You'll notice when you do that, you get the resulting latency here. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's longer and you got to be careful that you don't um, change the buffer size such that, you know, you're getting a, a noticeable latency between the time you depress a note and hear it in your headphones. That can be very disorienting. It's never going to be so bad that it's going to be like a half second or anything. But um, for example, in 512, Logic is saying we're going to get 30.3 millisecond round trip here. So let's see if, if we really notice that, that latency. I'll apply the changes, increase the buffer size, and let's go to something quick again like these sixteenths.
I'm not noticing any pops or cracks or anything. Hopefully this isn't messing with my voiceover as well as I switch buffer sizes. Sometimes it can drop out or mute. Um, but anyway, I've just read a lot on forums and people having issues with that. Go to your go to your settings, mess with your buffer, and that might solve the problem, especially if you're on a machine that is older or maybe not kind of future-proofed. For transparency's sake, I'll go to my Mac here. And you can see that I've got 64 gigs of memory. This is an 8-core machine. It's a little old, but still, 8-core machine. It's pretty powerful. Um, and we get some pops and clicks when we go really low on the buffer size, but uh, when we have have it somewhere in the middle, it's a little bit more forgiving. So um, I guess before we get to the final thoughts on this library, um, I want to say that there are some other uh, stuff, there's some other stuff out there, um, especially from Sonokinetic, that might be interesting to you. So they've got their Austin Auto Strings, not exactly the same kind of library, but similar in feel and vibe. So we have these different Austin Autos. Um, we can play here. Whoa. A much louder library, but you can switch around between um, the di the different uh, I guess I guess you want to call them time divisions or basically note values really easily. So, you know, to me, that is a much more responsive kind of ostinato machine. And I wasn't even changing, uh, you know, the notes over here, which you can do on the fly as well. Just in case you don't know this is out there, this might be more up your alley than what um, the um, the Kepler Orchestra provides, which I think is something a little bit different than what I was expecting. When I got the marketing for this library, you know, and you saw those planets moving around in orbit and everything, I thought we'd get a new visualization. I thought this library would kind of be a little bit different. And when we got back to the PEG system, I was like, oh, this isn't really what I was expecting. But once you wrap your head around it um, and understand it, I think it's one of those libraries where once you get what they're trying to do and the way that they've set everything up, because it doesn't really behave like a lot of other Spitfire libraries as far as I'm concerned, um, you get it and you can get in there and, and mangle and, and move things around. But I have to admit, this is not the most um, playable library in terms of like, you play something and then you can move around and, and record something. You kind of have to lay everything out a bit like a painting and put all your colors down and add layers and add another layer. I'm kind of going all over the place here. But I went to this Bitfire website and I heard all of the absolutely gorgeous demos from, um, from you know, their incredible team over there, Home and... Um, Oliver and, and I was like, oh my god, this is incredible. Then I got the library myself and I really found myself struggling to understand how everything was laid out and how to get really good results really quickly. And that's one of the things that Spitfire is so good for is just put your fingers down, get something beautiful, keep moving. And with this library, I was just like, okay, time divisions and these note values and some of them are accelerating and some of them are shards. And also I can't move between note values on the fly like a key switch like you can with Ostinato from Sonokinetic. And it just really took my brain a minute to wrap around that. And I had the clicks and pops and stuff. So that created a kind of negative experience where you have to go, you know, if you have to stop what you're doing to go to a forum and see what's going on and then, you know, adjust your buffer settings, etc. It just creates a kind of... Um, like a stop, start, continue, stop, start, continue kind of vibe, which is not really ideal. Um, I guess what we're wondering here is, is the juice worth the squeeze? Once you actually figure out this library, um, can you create really good stuff from it? This is pretty new, this library. I'm going to keep playing with this. And if I compose something with this library, I'd love to make a proper Let's Play video where I actually sit down and show you the guts of a queue and how I came up with it. I'd love to come up with something as beautiful as the demos on the Spitfire site. But right now, getting my head around this library and playing with it, I'm not coming up with stuff as quickly. And that really isn't... <laughs> 
it's not really something to do with this library as much It's probably just me and my own kind of time and, and energy and, and interest and stuff like that. But, um, what do you think of this library? What do you think of what you heard? Um, I'd love to know. This is a kind of a left turn for, for Spitfire with Kepler because, you know, you got these time divisions and stuff like that. And, and I'd love to get your thoughts on, you know, the value of the library, the competitive landscape, how you feel about what's, what's out there already. Um, and if there's something that does ostinato that I don't know about, I'd love to hear that too. Leave that in the comments. So, um, we're going to sign off from here. Uh, we played with a couple of the patches and articulations, not quite, you know, fully fleshed out 40 minute walk through and deep dive into this guy, but hopefully this gives you an idea of what you can expect with uh, Kepler Orchestra. And thank you very, very much for watching as always, and I'll see you soon.